Hi, I'm Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics. Today I'm going to show you how to make a quilt and it's called Slice of Cake 4. This is a pattern for me and my sister designs. I've made several of their patterns and they're just excellent. This one comes with instructions for two different quilts. We're going to make this one here. That's a little better picture of it. And so we need to pick out a layer cake and some background. We're going to need 36 layer cake squares. And that's good because most layer cakes come with 40 or 42. So let's see if we can find an interesting one for this pattern. This would make a pretty one. It's got very pretty red tones, tan tones. Maybe this one, which is very colorful, that would also be a nice one. Oh yeah, this one might be really good. I love these fabrics. They're from Moda. It's called Sunshine Soul. Look at the nice different colors in there. Blues, purples, corals. Let's use this one. Now these prints definitely have a lot going on. We've got a lot of big flowers and small flowers and different colors. So we're for sure going to want to use a solid color for our background. So I've got lots of them over here. Let's pick a good one for this group. So what I'm looking for is something that will show up all of the colors in here, that will help them show up. So an orangey color would be good. Pink would also work, maybe not quite as strong. A lot of these have a light background like this. So I'm thinking that something dark like a purple would be good. I think this shade right here, that will work the best. We do need one more fabric and that's an accent fabric. And it's used in the middle of these blocks and as the cornerstones. So I'm gonna use an almost solid this time, not completely solid. I like this collection called Thatched. It has just a little bit of texture in it. And I think they almost look like flowers in here. So for the middle, that would be good. The green would be good. I think this teal will show up very nicely on the purple and that's where it is. It's going to be on the purple every time. So the first thing we're going to work with is the layer cake. I need to pick out the 36 layers that we're going to use and really my only consideration is will they show up against the background? So I think almost all of them will, except there's a couple of purpley ones that won't show up as well. So I probably won't use that one or that one, and maybe not that one, but the rest of them we can use. Now we're just going to take all of these squares, and I can do three or four at a time, and cut them in half along the diagonal. Go ahead and do that with all of the squares. Once they're all cut, head to the sewing machine and just grab two at a time. So I'm just gonna grab two different colors. So if I have kind of an aqua one, now I'm gonna get a coral one and I'm gonna just pair these up and sew them together along the diagonal here. And I don't want you to worry if you don't feel like it's perfect, if everything isn't perfectly lined up. Just line up this edge here. And we're making a big half square triangle. We're gonna do this with all the squares, but once they're done, we're going to trim them down. So I don't want you to worry because you are sewing on a bias edge here. I don't want you to worry that something might be stretching or the edges around here don't feel perfect. It won't matter at all. Just line up these two edges and stitch down there. Now we want to iron these open. So I'm gonna put the lighter fabric on the bottom and then peel this open and make sure that that seam allowance is heading towards the darker fabric. Just pat it down a little with your hands. 
and then use a little steam. Now we need to trim them down. So we're gonna trim all four sides. There's a couple ways to do this. The way I find it is easiest is to put that seam line on the diagonal line that's on my cutting board. Most cutting mats will have a diagonal line like that. Now, even though the seam is on the line, you have to decide where you're gonna put it on the line. And I'm going to put it right here so that I can cut along here and along here. I'm gonna cut just a little bit off of these two sides. And you'll see that this cut will be right still that seam is still coming right into the corner there. Now I'm going to measure over how big I want this cut, which is eight and a half inches. And I'm gonna slice along this side. And then I could measure up from this cut, eight and a half inches, and that will show me where to cut here. Now, there is a little bit of an easier way to do this and the easier way is if you have a twisty mat. So that's one of these rotating cutting boards here. This way you can put it on here and it's still got it's still got a line across the middle there. But this way when you cut, you can cut the two sides or even one side and you can just twist it so that you're always cutting along your right side. If you're right-handed, that is for sure the easiest way to cut. So go ahead and get all your blocks trimmed to size. Okay, those are all done. Now we need to cut some squares out of our background fabric. Now we're going to take each of these squares and we're going to mark on one side on the diagonal. So I like to use a light pencil. Sometimes I will use this white chalk pencil. Let's see how well just a white pencil shows up. Oh, that does make a nice mark there. So usually I can get away with this pencil, but sometimes the white just shows up better. Now, before I draw on all of them, I'm going to want to draw a second line. I'm going to draw another line half an inch away. So you can either use a small ruler like this, or you can just move this over so that the half inch line is right on your first line and draw a second line. Now, this isn't something that the pattern calls for, but we're going to be able to get a bonus half square triangle by drawing this second line now and it will be nice and accurate. I'm back at the sewing machine with these background squares and these half square triangles and we need to take one of these squares and we're going to put it on a corner. We're going to put it on the corners that have the seams and we're going to line it up like this so that that extra line is over towards the outside. You don't want it lined up like this. You want it lined up just like that. And we're going to stitch on both lines here. Now when you stitch your first line the first time, you want to make sure that when you fold this over, all your edges are meeting up. So if you find that they're not, you can adjust your seam a little bit. See how my seam is just a skosh over towards the corner from my drawn line. That helps because there's a little bulk when you fold it. So that helps make those edges meet. So check your first few to make sure they meet like that. Then you can sew this second line. And then we're going to do the same thing on the opposite corner. Remember, it's the corners that have the seam on them. Now all we have to do is iron these corner background squares 
toward the corner. And it's real easy. It's nice and stable because we've got that square, all square underneath us there. So that really keeps this from distorting. Once they're nice and flat, we're going to cut right between our two stitching lines. So if we do this on both corners, our block is now completely done, but we were able to get a bonus square here. Now I'm gonna iron it open. Let's see, let's iron it this way. And we've got a little half square triangle, but it's got two fabrics in it there. So we'll cut off the dog ears. And again, this is not in the pattern, but it's just a nice bonus square that you get. I hate throwing away fancy patchwork like this. So I'm gonna save them up and make a little pillow or a table runner, something, and I'll show you at the end of the video. Once those are all done, we're ready to cut the accent fabric. We also need to draw a line on the back of these squares. I've picked off four of the blocks and four of the accents. And we're going to sew the accents just onto one of these background corners. So line up your edges. And again, stitch right on that line or ever so slightly towards the corner along the side of the line. Make sure your edges all match after you stitch it and go ahead and do that with these four blocks. These also get ironed toward the corner. And then just trim, leaving a quarter inch seam allowance. Now we're just going to spin these blocks around so that that accent is in the center and then our block will be done. So I'm gonna leave it like this, put those right sides together, those right sides together, and now I'm gonna slide this under the machine. And they're exactly the same size, it's very easy. I'm actually not even gonna worry about making sure that any of the seam allowances match up because they're they're not really going to show if they don't. And all the seam allowances are facing the same way, so it's a little bit bulky. But I'll show you what it looks like here. So I'm going to open this one up and keep the seam allowance pressed to the right. So I'm going to finger press it. And you'll notice right here where I didn't even try to match, look how closely it's matched. And even though it isn't perfect there, you really can't tell, so I'm not gonna worry about it too much. Now this seam allowance, we're gonna press in the opposite direction. So just pull it open and then use your fingernail or even the tip of your finger and slide it right along that seam. Now we can put these right sides together, match the corners. And of course, I'm going to match the intersection right in the middle here because I've got my back seam allowance going down and this one going up. So they nest. It's real easy to get those to match. Get your corners together here. And there is our first flower block. We'll finger press it, then we'll take it over to the iron and iron it nice and flat, and then I'm gonna finish up all the rest of the blocks. I have all of the blocks done, and we're ready to lay the quilt out. So it's very easy because there's only nine blocks. And of course, once you get them laid out, you can spin them around so that you can balance out your colors a little bit if you like, but I try to not be too, too picky about that. That's the last block. And you'll notice there's a little space left between all of them. And that's because 
we've got cornerstones and sashing. So the cornerstones are going to go in all of the corners here, and the sashing goes between all the blocks there. That's really making the quilt look nice. It's making these blocks look nice and round. So it's very easy to sew the rows together. This is a row of blocks with sashing. Then we have a row of sashing with cornerstones, another row of blocks, and then we can get the whole quilt together. The last step is to put this on all the way around as an outside border. Once we have that done, we can get it loaded onto the quilting machine. The quilt is on the machine and I'm ready to pick out some thread. There's lots of colors that will look good here. This peachy color, that's gonna blend in really well in all of these prints, even on that, you can hardly see it. You'll be able to see it a little on the lavender background there. Now this is a little bit darker. Even on the very lightest, it's not gonna show much. It's gonna show just a little bit there. Of course, we could do a lavender. Now this one is going to blend right in, in the background area. Won't show in there. That would be great if we want it to recede, but I'm actually thinking that this bluish teal color, which is almost the same as our cornerstones, it'll show up here. It'll show up just a little bit in all the, the um, patches here, but I think that's gonna make it look more dramatic. Now for the quilting pattern, I'm using one called Tapestry. I love these vines with the leaves. We've got some prints that look just like that. And there's kind of an abstract flower and this will match very well with the style of the prints that we're using in the quilt. I've got the quilt all done. I'm very happy with how it turned out. It's 56 by 56 inches, so it's a nice square quilt. Of course, it would be very easy to make a bigger one, just use more layer cake squares. I really like how this sashing and cornerstones look a little different than what I would traditionally think of those items looking like. They just make these blocks float and they echo the pattern that's in the middle of these squares here and it looks really good. Now this part here, when I looked at the pattern, I thought, oh, that's probably gonna be very difficult, but it really was quite easy. The quilting pattern with all of these viney leaf things, it matches the fabrics that are in here just exactly. And on the back side, I used a nice stripe from the same collection of fabrics that's in the top. It's kind of an abstract stripe and the quilting shows up very nicely on there as well. Thank you so much for watching our tutorial today on how to make the slice of cake four quilt. Now we've done a video on slice of cake two. I haven't done one in three yet, but I'll be happy to do those if you just let me know in the comments below that you'd like to see them. Now we're gonna have another giveaway. We made a quilt called Tea Time. In a video, we made this nice, bright, batik one. This is an easy pattern to make. And I used all batiks here, nice, bright sunflower print on the border, vivid pink on the back. And it's very easy to enter the giveaways. Just click the link below this video that says giveaway and put in your name and your email address. Good luck. Now, if you like our videos and you wanna support us, the best thing you can do is subscribe to our YouTube channel. That really helps us out. Happy quilting. There's one more thing I almost forgot to show you. Remember these little squares we had left over? I put them together into a pillow.
So this is just all made with these squares. I just turned them different ways and I got this nice chevron look. So I made seven blocks wide, seven blocks long. And it's nice because there is purple on the top, but then on the bottom, there's the printed part. And I quilted this just on my regular machine. I just made the top, put a little piece of batting behind it, and then I just stitched parallel to those seams. And then here I just went right in the middle. So it was very easy to make. You could make a little table runner instead, but this is just a great use for those extra pieces.